What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Friday Less Perfectly YouTube Live, How to Use Google Lens to Sell More. I've got a couple of guests. I want to bring them in. I want to do like a big, uh, a big intro for each of them. But uh, real quick, we've got some of the usual suspects, of course. Andrew, what's up, Andrew? Christian Huerta, what's up, Don? Congratulations to Don Nolder on the Community Spirit Award. So congratulations to that. You guys can see that in the Facebook group. Dan is here. Jay's here. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining. This is going to be a really fun session. Uh, I've got the fabulous Teresa Cox, 26, 20-something year eBay seller, less perfectly first user. She's going to bring her long-term expertise into uh, Google Lens to using Google Lens to sell more, how she's using it. Then, of course, the awesomeness of Josh Gutierrez, card seller, uh, Sell It Better, Popular Brands LLC. He's going to tell us how he uses it, different perspectives. But real quick, I want to remind you, camp listing party tickets are on sale. Uh, that is our huge, big first reseller event at the end of June in Phoenix, Arizona. And you can get tickets for that at listperfectly.com slash events. And remember, I want to emphasize this is not just for List Perfectly users. It's open to all sellers, open to everybody. It's and everybody's going to find value from this. And, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start introducing, announcing, introducing, announcing speakers next week. Uh, so you will get a lot more information next week. It's very exciting. We're talking to a lot of different sellers. It's going to be amazing. But without further ado, first, ladies and gentlemen, please help me help me welcome. The fantastic, the amazing Teresa Cox, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show, Teresa. Wait, I'm on a show? What are we doing? Yes, I thought this was a Zoom call. It's, no, no. It's the, actually, <laughs> it's not about Google Lens. It's a Snoop Dougie show. I didn't want you to be nervous. So um, welcome. I've been ambushed. I was That's just typing right. a comment in and you, um, you caught me mid-sentence. So I will delete that comment and chat with you. How's it going, Doug? All right. How are you? I'm doing well. Every time you um, introduce me and talk about how many more years I've li li sold on eBay, I just feel like I'm getting older and older. So let's just go, let's just stick with 25 plus. 25 plus. All right. I'll try to remember that. 25 plus year eBay seller, list perfectly's first user, um, stellar extraordinaire, expanded across the board, the number one. I'm number one. <laughs> Lisa's number one numbers geek. Um, and she's going to have that awesome perspective and she sells on multiple platforms. She's really expanded her business. So it's going to be really cool. Um, super excited about this Google lens integration with list perfectly and how, how it, um, you know, saves time, saves money, helps, uh, helps with listing as well. All right, Teresa, without further ado, let's bring in the young, handsome, with his glowing skin, his fantastic <laughs> hair, the uh, the tech savvy. We talk about tech stuff all the time, and he schools me on stuff, reminds me of stuff, brings stuff to my attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous, fabulous Josh Gutierrez. Welcome to the show, Josh. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Hi. It's a Hi. pleasure to be here, as always. Uh, look forward to talking with you guys about Google Lens, how I use it for my business, uh, and how I use it to optimize my listing. So I, I look forward to it, and I hope that you guys learn something from it, because uh, when I'm with Teresa, I always learn something about selling. So that's what we're here for. Amazing. Uh, real quick, I just saw this. My uh, Donovan Collection, 20th year account anniversary for eBay was on the fourth and today one year anniversary of going full-time as a reseller congratulations don that's amazing that's we awesome. always love to hear that people making the jump anytime you go from full-time to or from uh, part-time reselling to full-time that first year is tough so congratulations on making it through the first year don yeah seems like you're doing well keep at it there you go. Happy anniversary, Donovan. Claire is here as well, ladies and gentlemen. She is in the comments. Congratulating, Don. Awesome. Josh, you should be a model. That's great feedback for you. 
<laughs> I hear people laughing across. Was that Tiffany laughing in the background? Yeah, she hey. was in the background laughing. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I was going to say two things. I was going to say, I don't know about selling for 25 years, but I certainly have listed for 25 years. And I had a conversation because I shipped one item out today. And I had a conversation with somebody about we needed a different side hustle. So we started Googling feet pics. Oh. <laughs> so maybe Josh, oh, no. maybe Josh needs to go into the, the modeling business too. <laughs> Anything no, for a side hustle. No, you definitely don't want to see my feet. For, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we were just kind of desperate. Like sales have been pretty, pretty low. But, you know, low compared to last year. Let me just say that. There you go. I've heard that can be a lucrative uh, a lucrative side gig but Teresa you'll have to let us know <laughs> I googled through. it and I said I'm out <laughs> I don't need another side uh, hustle <laughs> all right cool and super sale Trish Trish Glenn is here the fabulous Trish Glenn all right so let's get started so for each of you tell us uh Tell us what Google Lens Lens is in very basic terms. We'll let Josh do that. Uh, very basic uh, terms. It's just a search tool, a search optimization tool. All, all it's doing is, you know, it's stopping you from, from um, having to describe an item, right? So you have an item, you could go try to Google a title, uh, but it'll bring uh, basically do the searching for you via the image. So that's really what it's for as far as when we're talking about being a reseller. If there's any other special way to use it, I would love to know. But that's like my most base explanation level for it. And yeah. And so you've likely been using it for a bit, right, Josh? Yeah, I mean, it's not like a, I know we're talking about it because, you know, we just, uh, you know, we've, brought it into list perfect as part of our listing list perfectly as part of our listing flow. So obviously, you know, definitely know every reseller should know what Google lens is at this point. It's not like some super secret. And we know that we can go and reverse search an image, uh, you know, so obviously yes. Um, but what, what I'm really excited to talk with everyone about today is just why it's so exciting to have that within my list perfectly workflow, because it's not, necessarily something that I care to use before. To me, I list uh, cards, so I really don't care to like reverse search the image when I can just as easily put, go on Google search and I know exactly what I'm searching for. So, um, and not that it would have been like bad. I just found, I just found it unnecessary basically to go through that step. So that's why I'm here to kind of say, hey, actually, now that it's part of my uh, list perfectly workflow, it, it has real value for me. And, uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with because of what I sell. But of course, I'd love to hear how, uh, you know, Teresa uses it. So. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. Level. <laughs> Teresa knows that when I said, when I open my mouth, I'm like, <laughs> but I will let you talk, Teresa. Give us well, your I mean. Speech. That's an awesome thing. And I will tell you that, you know, I've been selling, I was not a Google Lens user. I typed in the words, I found the items, I did the search that way. Um, but since List Perfectly has integrated it in the catalog, I'm doing it for a lot of a lot of different ways. Like I just sold an old phone set, um, you know, the old where you had a base phone and then you had like four extensions in every room. Well, I was cleaning out some stuff of my mom's and I found her own old phone set. So I listed the base with three handsets, whatever, 50 bucks, whatever. I sold it on Macari. I looked it up. Yeah, it's worth a lot more than that. <laughs> but I didn't use Google Lens when I did when I listed it. And so I should have. I would have probably asked more money for it, so on and so forth. But um, I because of this now, I use it. Um, I was sourcing. I was in Vegas and I did some sourcing. And so I actually pulled it up on my phone. And I just, you know, did a couple Google, Google Lens search on some shoes that Frankly, they were Nikes. I didn't want to have to look to find the UPC code because I'm a UPC code girl. I okay. do a lot of UPC and style number stuff. And it was just so much easier and faster to do Google Lens. So even though it's been around, like you said, Josh, it's not something that I really use. And, and um, But now I find myself using it a lot more. And now with, list, with it integrated with 
list perfectly, um, it just makes it so much easier not only to see the what the item is if you don't know what it is, keywords, titles, what platforms other people might be selling them on, and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of uh, like I don't even use it for pricing. I, I use it for my title optimization. So, because um, you know how I price is kind of speculative a little bit. And there is some of that, too, when I'm um, looking through the different cards and seeing what listings pop up or whatever. Um, you know, I'm, I'm caught by surprise by the prices sometimes, too, because there's a card that I wasn't necessarily looking to list, but I had it in my stack. And, uh, yeah, I'm like, okay, I can get $10 for this card. I didn't know that, and I almost didn't list it. So, you know, that's been kind of fun for me. But, yeah, uh, in short, I use it for my business purely for the titles. Interesting. Yeah, consignment chats say the same thing. Helps with key words and titles for sure. So here's an interesting question. So I would love to see if we can address this. So Laura says she can't do much Google Lens with clothing, she thinks. So what do you guys think of that? I mean, no, I actually kind of agree, yeah. agree with it to an extent. Um, you know, and, that, and I figured I would kind of, we would come across that, you know, not everyone uses it for what they uh, sell. I think it's more so for people who kind of have a bread and butter and know what they're looking for when they uh, go and search or whatever. Um, and that's why I said I use it for like, I don't need to use Google Lens when I'm looking for cards. I just don't. Like, sure. I already know. So, yeah, um, it's definitely not for everyone, but just try it because it's really that easy. Uh, all you have to do is click on the little magnifying glass and just see what pops up. I mean, definitely why wouldn't you do that? would be my question. Yeah, definitely. And a couple of people, Dana, Popular Network, chiming in that uh, clothing labels work great with Google, Google Lens. That makes sense. That makes sense. But what else? So we know, um, we know Josh is listing cards. Teresa, what do you, what do you, what have you listed? What are you using the, the integration for? And then we'll get a little deeper into how it works. So I've been playing around with it um, a lot, and um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you want me to do a share. No, well, I'm using it like I will put. I've got a bunch of fabric that I'm listing. Okay. So fabric is just a picture, an image of the fabric, and you put, you click on the Google Lens, and then it's like that's tons of keywords, pricing. Um, you know, my fabric is six ninety nine on eBay, eleven ninety nine on Etsy. Um, and actually, I wonder if both of those are mine because the images look the same. <laughs> but um, but I think keywords and sometimes I've been using it a lot with a fabric because any of you, anybody that sells fabric knows that on some fabric on the selvage, it will give you the brand name and sometimes even the line, the name of the line. And um, but if you don't have the right, you know, if you have a half a yard of fabric and it's not on that, then you got to Google it and try to figure out to get those keywords. So that to me has been a surprise. I just tried it out last week and that's been very effective for me. So I've really enjoyed that part of it. Um, you know, HP calculator, I just wanted to get an idea for, you know, is there anything else that you can call it besides a vintage 12C finance calculator? So I did the Google lens and got a couple more keywords. Um, but the reality is there's really not a whole lot more than calling it a HP 12C financial calculator. There you go. What about, uh, this is Greek, what about Vera Bradley fabric? No idea what that is. Oh, did somebody, oh, you know what? I don't have, let me see if I have any Vera Bradley stuff in my store and I can check. Yeah. Um, Assignment chats mentioned, great for fabric patterns like Vera Bradley. It's all right. Oh yeah, there you go. And yeah, and a lot of times um, people will, um, uh, you know, people will ask in groups, Oh, like different brands and they want to know, you know, like what the name is of such and such. And, um, oh, here's a prayer, Bradley. And, um, yeah, so that would be a great way to do it. Uh, let me see. Well, and this is super popular in the comments. Everybody's loving the fabric idea. A lot of people are saying I hadn't thought of that. Um, that's great. Yeah. Vera Bradley pink and white fold over wallet. Um, and if I scroll down for, far enough, I could probably find the pattern name, which is what we need, which is what you really need for Vera Bradley, um, the fabric pattern name. 
And then even sometimes with a Vera Bradley, you need to know the style. So is this a backpack style? Is it the hobo style? I don't, they have a lot of different names for their items. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Dana Crawford. I use it when thrifting to identify plush. I'm not up on all those new plush toys. So it helps a lot. That is interesting. Yep. That's a great one too. Yeah. So it's definitely kind of one of those things where, uh, we're pretty much just uh, figuring out how we use it for our workflow. Like it's not a one size. We all know what Google Lens is and what it's capable capable of. We know that we can use it when we're sourcing. Um, so it's really just like what is the easiest and best way to optimize and use it for you. Uh, so I think that's kind of um, like what more could you really say about Google Lens as far as how you use it? There you go. Uh, Mama Lori, I'm just getting here. I'm listing a Vera Bradley purse. Vera Bradley's very, very popular in the comments. What are we referring to the Google search function? So Mama Lori, Lori, we are talking about um, List Perfectly's Google Lens integration, how it integrates directly into your List Perfectly flow with the pro plan. We're going to talk about where it works, how it works, how we use it, and just um, you know how it's great to help you optimize your listings, uh, get uh, title info, keyword info, um, and pricing info. So hopefully that answers the question. So do we wanna take a look at it in action? Maybe sure. from two perspectives, you wanna start? Yeah, I'll definitely share my screen. So I'll show, I'll show you guys just uh, basically the old way of using it. And it's not the only way. It's just okay. like whenever you're uh, listing how you would access Google Lens with List Perfectly. So and while you, do that, do... I'm, while you do that, I'm going to share the link to a, a super fresh blog post on the List Perfectly blog, the community seller blog from the fantastic Pat Allman. All right. So are we able to see the screen here? We yep. can. Looks okay. fantastic. All right. So basically all you would do is click this link picture comes up and all I'm going to do is search the image with Google. And as you see, boom. And I would never do this previously. Um, like it just, there is no need for me to even like, I could just as easily do a quick uh, Google Google search because I know what I'm describing but like, this is just way easier. Like, well, and it's in the flow. So it's saving you, saving you. Yeah, time. exactly. No. So really when we're talking about it, it's like making your workflow faster. Does it make your workflow faster? That's how you're going to get sales. Does it make it easier? Does it make it faster? And you know, Josh, is your, is your Google search coming up on a different computer? Cause we don't see it on the screen. Uh, can you can't see it right here? No, we only see your list perfectly. Uh, okay, okay. There Do you, you go. See it now? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, with Google, you got to like, yeah. So you would just, uh, can you see the lens now? Yes. There you go. Okay, so yeah. So that's all you're doing. And then I don't know, you have to like share it a certain way, so. Oh. Uh. Well, and I was referring, saving time because, you know, for the, for the click snobs in the house, Teresa Cox loves to save clicks. <laughs> So I was how, checking out those cards. There was a three hundred and something dollar card out of there. Yeah, and I yeah. just I got my first one hundred listings out uh, because I go through kind of the same things that everyone else does. Like I have all of these cards, I don't list them, and um, but you know I kind of was testing out Google Lens. And it just was super easy for me to copy paste the, the listings uh, for the most part with cards everything comes up fairly quickly fairly easy there's very few cards that you have to actually go through and search for and kind of create your own listing out of so that's been really great for me and then really just in theory i'm able to get my cards out easier and faster so due to my first 100 listings be out uh, coming out the result has been making sales uh, so and i've sold some high-end cards and then i sold a couple three dollar cards um so yeah i feel like I feel like that's really the result of using Google Lens personally. It's awesome. Cool, cool. Josh, you have a little bit of echo that's coming and going. So if you could hit uh, settings 
Sorry for the technical offside, ladies and gentlemen. Hit settings and then go to audio. There's a um, option in there that is echo cancellation. So if you could click that, maybe th hopefully that. Yeah, Please. yeah. I click. Uh, that's actually on. Can you? Is it still echoing? No, it comes and goes. You sound good now. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. What, I guess it's the internet or something. No worries. Um, I like this, and there's another comment I want to hop on. So. Mama Lori says, heck yeah. She loves the Google Lens function. Helped her find a maker's mark on a piece of pottery made in 1901. I think you posted about that and I saw it. Went from possibly listing for 20 to 30 to listing for 570. That, there you go. That says it all. <laughs> that's all we need to say, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that says it all, but that's a great example. And, and Mama Lori just paid for her List Perfectly subscription for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. We love that. Okay, here's a good question. Gina says, what's the difference between the Google search on Google versus the Google on LP? So this is an excellent question. Thank you, Gina. Uh, panel, can you take that question? I don't know. Technically, for me, it's the flow because I think it does the same thing. Um, I certainly don't know how the behind-the-scenes engine is running on List Perfectly, but it does the same thing, but it, now it's in the listing flow. And I never ever use Google Lens before. And I use it all the time now because it makes it easier in the listing flow. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And there's, there's no real difference. It's just more so um, it's integrated with List Perfectly. It's not necessarily like a different separate entity or anything like that. I hope that makes sense. Well, and yeah, and the main thing is it's in the flow. It saves time. And one interesting thing you can do when you're doing your comparables you can do a screen print of your comparable. So you have that um, have that uh, for record. And Claire and I were talking about that earlier, and she said, you know, that's a good practice is do a screen print of those comparables and save it in your listing as an extra image, and you've got it right there. You need to refer yep. back if you need to adjust your price and optimize. Yeah, and with List Perfectly, you get 30 images per listing, so why not? Exactly, exactly. Um, so I put the link to the blog post. We just published a high level blog post from Pat Allman. He tells that great story of, um, he does the garage sailing with, uh, with his daughter. And then, uh, you know, that story, right? Uh, Teresa, where they, she. Did really he write, did he write, I didn't read the blog post yet, but I think I do. It is this about how he, how she used the, um, Google lens to get the listings created. Yeah. 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 So they had gone garage sailing. And um, I love this story so much because if you use a VA like I do, a lot of times your VA, VA doesn't have a clue what your listing is. And if your photographer hasn't taken pictures or made notes about it because they're the ones that have it in their hand, then then your uh, listing VA is stuck. And so um, Pat had um, created a bunch of uh, images in his catalog. And I, I believe it was his daughter that was creating the listings. And she had about 50 listings that um, she didn't know what the heck they were. And so they just kind of sat there because, of course, Pat didn't have time to do it. And then after Google Lens came out, she went through every listing with Google Lens and was able to identify like something like 45 of the 50 items. And then all of a sudden that work is done. And he, so, you know, then it makes it easy for him to go in and just do five because that's not so overwhelming. So that's proof right there. If you, if you use, I mean, it doesn't even have to be that you don't need to, you don't know what it is, but if you, you use a VA and they don't know what it is. There you go. Yeah. It's just awesome. And you know what, if you had a VA, the VA could still do it the other way, but would you tell your VA to spend the time to go copy your picture, paste it into Google Lens, search it? It's just that it's there. You click and it just pops up. Like it's just we have become so used to things happening so fast and right at our fingertips that um, this is just amazing. And the fact that it, that it's it's Googled by, or um, run by Google Lens and not something else that's using Google Lens and translating it. And I don't know how all these programs work. Um, I love that. I like that, you know, cause some eBay has something that they use. You can use a Google 
uh, image search on Amazon, but you can't always find the right item. Same thing with eBay. And I haven't come across anything so yet. I don't do a lot of weird antiques, one of a kind things, but I haven't come across anything yet that um, hasn't been on Google somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it again, Google Lens, same tool. It's incorporated into listing flow. You know, we heard the feedback. We wanted to add it in. We added it in. Uh, you can use it mobile, desktop, any yeah. browser, your phone, your tablet. So, Josh, what are you using to uh, use the Google Lens? I mean, I really just use it for my phone. Um, and that's just a normal flow yeah. because I take my pictures with my phone. And um, so, like, I don't even necessarily um, care to put my titles whenever I'm, like, going through a stack of cards. I'm just like, save next, save next, save next. That's really – and then – yeah. Now, when I'm going through that list on my desktop or my laptop, I'm just going down the list, hit my magnifying glass. I would say about 99.9% because there's been like one card where I couldn't figure out, you know, I couldn't find this specific uh, card to get a title from. But <laughs> so most of the time, um, yeah, it's just copy paste my title uh, and there's really nothing else to it. Like your title is essentially the the description with cards. Uh, I mean, you could put like all the extra uh, bells and whistles. Sure. In my experience, it doesn't matter. Uh, you want the best title you can get. You want your, you know, Panini, Prism, PSA, Tom Brady, whatever. There you go. Yeah. No, and that's, you know, it goes back to what we always talk about optimization. Um, and optimization is not, it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. I love the quote from my friend Dave Snyder. If your listing was, if you think your listing is stale, it was stale when you listed it. There you go. For sure. Yeah. And yeah, I, uh, Treasure Box Land had a, uh, they said, do you find that you use Google Lens that worst point comes up more than ever? To me, it's always just eBay. I don't know if that's like a car thing or what, but it's always eBay down the list. I think it depends on what you're selling. And what you're searching, because I can see where one of a kind type items would drive a uh, pop into Worth Point, because Worth Point has something like 15 years of history. And I think it's all driven from eBay sales. And so you're only going to get eBay sales back 90 days, or I think I don't know if Terapeak comes up in search. Probably not. Terapeak isn't going to come up in the um, Google search, but I'm not positive about that. But, you know, a year or two at most on eBay. I think Tara Peak goes back two years now. Yeah, I think so. And um, one quick point, and then I do want to expand on that. So just so you know, if you're not familiar, so this is, you know, one of those things added that's no cost. It's included with your List Perfectly plan. Um, and at the pro plan level, it's included directly in the listing flow, but you can use it with all plans. But let's talk about some of those um some of the other options out there. So obviously, you know, Worth Point, you can go there. Terra Peak, you can go there via your eBay listing. Um, other eBay tools. What do we think of uh, Mercari smart pricing, things like that? I don't use it. Yeah, I, I use, use it. it. I use Mercari. You? I use it. Yeah, and I know, I know we kind of, so we kind of sit, powwow, have meetings about it and stuff. And, um, you know, we kind of talk about, we don't necessarily think that's the best, uh, you know, collectively, I think people don't like smart pricing. To me, I kind of enjoy um, seeing how things move. Like I, I enjoy seeing if their smart pricing works. I like experimenting. And to me, I've made sales using smart pricing. I'm just being honest. Like, I don't know. I understand why people don't like it. Like, I understand, get your money, get the price that you want. Uh, and we all know that, uh, whether it's Mercari or eBay or Poshmark, whatever, their pricing model is not necessarily reflective of the actual market. So, um, you know, I would say there's some truth to that, but there's also truth to, you know, to their pricing model as well. You know, they feel like they have, um, you know, however they do it, whatever algorithm they're using to get the median sold, you know, like items that sold at this price, whatever. And uh, to me, it works for cards uh, and, Mercari in general, it's not a place that um, it's more like electronics and collectibles to me. Like, I think if you're not selling anything in those lanes, you won't necessarily see 
high volumes and sales. Um, but to me, if you're using it for that, um, it has its use for sure. Yeah, I definitely, I tried it early on, but I do like to have control of my pricing. And I found that Mercari kind of encourages you just to lower your prices just to get a sale. A um, couple of comments on WorthPoint. Yeah, it's like kind of like you said, Teresa, WorthPoint supports vintage items, a lot of antique stuff. Uh, that's why I list perfectly went with the Google engine. TerraPeak's great, but yeah, it's um, it's data from eBay two years back. Google, I think, is a lot more comprehensive. And again, like you said, Teresa, I think the TerraPeak stuff might be gated. I don't know, via via the eBay flow. Yeah, I don't I don't know that anything's come up that's been older um, when I've done searches. So, you know, just trial and error information there. Exactly. A couple new people in sunny Las Vegas, a couple Vegas uh, sellers, sunny Las Vegas. What's up, Sonny? Nice to see you, Rosie. Nice to see you. What's up to Angel as well? I'm sure he's there, too. Nice to see you. What's up, Sonny? What is up? What's up, Rosie? Good to see you all. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. All right. So what I wanted to talk about too is um, I did want to mention, had an interesting chat with uh, Scott Chiching King the other day. Well, actually we did a podcast interview and that was, that's the podcast this week, ladies and gentlemen. And his thing was he, he really talked a lot about um, sourcing and sourcing challenges that he has because he lives and I had no idea. He lives in a town of less than a hundred people. So basically he, you know, he does a lot of sourcing online. So any, any ideas how, you know, Google lens could help you with sourcing? Yeah. It could help you find the cheapest prices for sure. Yeah. Cause I source online. Yeah. yeah. It's almost yeah. like its own, I guess in a way it's its own form of RA, uh, maybe even its own thing. Um, but, but that's how I view it. Um, for what I, everyone knows, I sell cards. I know I've said it a million times, but yeah, it's just better for me to source that way because if you're selling cards, it's not as easy as just going to the store, buying pra- uh, packs, breaking packs, and then selling yeah. those cards individually because you're not going to get super valuable cards. I would rather buy a lot of 50 cards of Devonta Smith, you know, top five wide receiver in the league. He's only 22. He's going to be good for years to come. I could probably get some profit off of those cards individually compared to looking for that card in a pack, spending, you know, five, seven bucks. Yeah, that's interesting. And um, I was out the other day, Teresa, thinking about you. I was out in a shop and I was like, oh, no, we were at uh, Michael's. We had to go get some stuff and they had, and I couldn't figure out if they're going out of business or what, but they had a lot of stuff 50% off. And I was like, if I were Teresa or if Teresa was here, she'd be scanning all this stuff. You need more than 50% off a lot of times, but yeah, I mean, that's exactly, you know, you got for me, because I do a lot of retail arbitrage, you have to be ready to do that when you run into those sales. Cause I don't keep up with when sales are for Pete, you know, yeah, and all the places. And, and so a lot of times it is just like that. You walk into the store, I love to hunt for end caps and target and Walmart and see where all the discounts are and go through those items and scan them. But yeah, I mean, now I'm using scanning a lot of things with Google lens. There you go. Yeah. Okay, and so I have a question. Yep. Well, cause you said you, most of the, a lot of times you need more than 50% off to me. If I saw 50% off, uh, I might buy that. Why would, you know, why is that to you that you need more than 50? Because and how normal it's... is that? Well, and it depends because I did, I think 50% off is too common for me, but, um, but then, you know what I go to, when I buy my shoes and my uh, clothes, I don't go to Ross Marshall, TJ Maxx, all those kind of stores. I don't do any sales there. So that's a hundred percent. But I think that by the time you figure out your 20% fees and your, you know, 250, 350, whatever it is to list an item, um, shipping, all that sort of stuff. It's just not a big enough margin for me. I like much larger margins. You know, my ideal thing is buy a pair of shoes for $20 and sell them for a hundred, 150. Some people are okay with a 30% ROI. I want a 200% ROI. So it's just, it's just depend. And I, it, I'm never, to, not to say that I don't do that. Um, but it's just not my normal. 
Yeah, Hobby Lobby 50% is part of their business model, 100%. Same with Kohl's. I quit sourcing at Kohl's because um, I can't keep up with their normal pricing and their, it's, it's too much and you have this card and that much and get this and it's like, I just feel like I'm getting scammed every time I walk into that store. Um, so I just don't do it. So, I mean, it's just, there are a lot of people that are very much on top of that and are crushing it with the coupons and stacking coupons, but that's not my game. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no, nah, it really just that's sounds like a lot of work that I'm not yeah. ready for. Yeah, it is a lot of work. And a lot of people find the it's fun for the hunt and oh my gosh, look, I got this and they were free. I mean, you see all those coupon Queens and I, you know, follow a couple of people on Instagram that are, at the Walgreens clearance all the time. I'm like, yeah, my Walgreens doesn't have any of those. And I've got one on every corner and none of those sales that they're looking at are in my area. So it's, and people do dollar general. Um, and they're just like, you buy this and you buy this and you stack it with this coupon and you walk out and you, you know, they paid you $2 and I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. It's always some speaking of algorithms, bizarro algorithm on the receipt. You saved blah, blah, blah. I was like, I did. It didn't seem like it, especially at the grocery store. Yeah, exactly. So okay, Teresa yeah, that's good to know. Sorry, sorry, Doug. Yeah. I was just, I was really wondering because I come, you know, so I'm still learning a lot about retail arbitrage. I really want to branch out to cards. I think cards was great because, you know, that's oh. what I love and that's what I know. So it was easy to build, you know, with that knowledge already. But I've already come across like, Okay, so I bought some shoes online that were on clearance. It was a great deal. And in theory, I did get a sell that was, you know, worth the money, worth the profit. But then I didn't take into account, you know, shipping fees to receive that item and then to give that item. And I'm just like, okay, it's so okay. W, W in many ways, but also, yeah, it had to eat that shipping cost. And that kind of sucked. It was a learning experience. And yeah, maybe there's a certain price point, uh, you know, maybe, uh, yeah, that's definitely something I'm still learning for sure. We call that tuition money. That was a $20 lesson for you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, a $100 lesson, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the so here's here's something for you to do, Josh. If you want to get into do some retail arbitrage, this is how I got into it. Uh, okay, so Easter's this weekend. So go to Target, go to Walmart, go wherever your local stores are, and everything will be 50%, 75% maybe in the next week. Don't go on the 50% off. Go on the 75% and 90% off. And then, but know that most of this stuff you're going to have to hang on to. Spend $100. And then the year that I went crazy with um, plastic Easter eggs, so they were selling them for $0.98 cents at Walmart for whatever or the package I had, 15 or 20 of them. And um, so I got them for 33 cents and I sold those things for $12.99. You know why? Because when you need plastic Easter eggs in July, you can't find them. And I often do. Um. So I, I did that. I did that kind of a, a model for a long time. I did Easter, Halloween, Christmas, and then summer because I live in Arizona and end of summer sales with all the pool stuff is pretty good. All right. And you know what? I will definitely, you know, put that to the test and I look forward to sharing it with the community. And uh, I'm going to use Google Lens with it because why wouldn't I? Because it's in my workflow. It's it takes yep. away all the clicks. So, yeah. So I look forward and to sharing that experience with you guys. If you're outsourcing Easter stuff, do not miss throwing some chocolate in that basket <laughs> there you go. yeah you cannot miss that because you get a good deal on the chocolate too which you can research with google lens as well but i like this comment bringing it back i like this comment from tiffany for sourcing i use google lens with screenshots of new photos oh. of celebs or influencers find out how much the clothing pieces bag shoes are and cop off the marketplaces before upsell so what are the celebrities wearing what does that outfit harry styles has on or Florence Pugh, things like that. That is interesting. So, um, so Teresa, you're just talking about sourcing in the real world. Do you want to show us your, uh, do you have anything you can show us with your Google Lens flow, how you've integrated it? Maybe well, back I to just, that, uh, Vera Bradley fabric. Yeah, let me find, I just, because I just, uh, give me one second, because I just, 
Um, okay, let's do this one. Uh, let me share my screen because I have a couple up here. So I'll show. Hmm. Okay, I closed that window. Okay. Mm, present. Uh yeah, while you do that real quick. Yeah, so much more than a pricing tool. You know, it's all about listing optimization, um, even images. Uh, yeah, just basically or, not I doing guess. things manually is where we're trying to head. And I think that's a 100% a step in the right direction. Because like we said, you don't, like I never used Google Lens until it was part of my actual listing flow. Okay, I think... Can you see my screen, my Vera Bradley? No, not yet. Let me add it for you. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, I have to make sure that because I have two screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So, screen thing. I so this is I pulled it up in my catalog. So you click on here. I closed the window already, but you click on this, and then this comes up. And I like this because you can you can zoom in on this, and maybe you just want to do. Uh, a Google lens on something like this. And then, you know, maybe that's what you use for your print. But if you want to see the whole item, then you can um, actually move that lens in and out. And so this is Vera Bradley. Um, this is what it's on Poshmark, eBay. So this, this one says retired. So I may click on this. Oh, guess what? It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. And then I did, uh, this is another Vera Bradley bag. I just happened to pull these up to see what they would come up. But you can see that the um, the variant, uh, the range of prices is amazing. But, you know, this is a different looking one. This is, so that's a good way to identify um, models and patterns. And then this is the, so this this is how difficult this is. This is the, just the soccer fabric. I did Google Lens, and now I'm wondering, I think these are probably both mine, although they are, yep, that's Club Red. When you get a chance, can you go back into your LP listing and show, um, you know, where we would click again? There's a question. Oh. Yeah, so you have this piece of fabric, and you just click in this magnifying globe, and there you have there you it. Go. All those different... Um, Soccer fabric choices with pricing with different uh, different spots. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing, too. A big part of um, listing optimization that people don't think about is looking at other listings, looking at your competitors, looking mm -hmm. at other marketplaces, maybe not the common most common marketplaces you think of, but you can do that all from there, too. And that's another big part of listing optimization. Yeah. And Laura, that's kind of to why I was saying, like, it's just there. So, why you know, you don't have to do it manually. So it just never hurts to, you know, just to ch check and see, basically. Yeah. And what I'm what I'm looking at, not only are these titles, I'm looking at the prices, but I'm looking at these platforms to see where they're selling this stuff. And. So, you know, I can see I need to make sure that I'm on Etsy. I need to make sure that I'm on eBay. I saw an eBay one up here, um, which I am. And then um, Etsy, I thought I saw Poshmark. A lot of my fabric is listed on Poshmark um, and it started out as an error, um, but um, stuff was selling. And so um, I need to get back to getting my fabric um, back on at, um, Poshmark because it does sell there. You wouldn't think so. That is interesting. Yeah, you did mention that way on, you know, you have all that fabric and it is selling on Poshmark. Where is it? Where's your biggest seller for fabric though? Um, eBay, it's eBay Etsy. And I was up early this morning. Um, a lot of you know that my mom was a quilter and she owned a quilt shop for 20 years in Southern California. And she was a quilter for probably 60 of her 80 years. And her entire garage, two and a half car garage is her quilting studio. So that is my project. And I was up early this morning. Um, I'm not sorting through that fabric. I'm just packing it up to move it. But that's going to be a huge part of my business next year after I move is just listing and selling fabric. And um, you know, if it's, if I can get it, sell it on Poshmark, I'll probably do the heavier pieces on Poshmark, not the fat quarters, 
okay. but the um the pieces that are several yards because of the shipping is so much better there uh but yeah you know it's gonna that's gonna be my life fabric and i know a lot about fabric but i don't know a lot about the later stuff that my you know i haven't been quilting for the last 15 years and so some of the newer stuff that my mom has bought in the last 15 years, I have no idea who these artists are and the designers and such. Okay. But if I can get it <clears throat> photographed then my, and use uh, Google Lens, then I will be amazed and thrilled if my VA could just use Google Lens and list all that. Because we all know that if it's up to me, it's not happening. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I got to find a, I got to find a, a fabric, if, if Google Lens doesn't work for me, then I got to find a fabric familiar lister, which is going to be a little tough. Okay. Yeah. Well, like you said, Google Lens can help if they're not familiar. Well, well, let's talk about that. Do you feel like Google Lens could help you kind of cut that, um, I guess, save time for your VA as far as not having to go and show them how to list and, you know, what titles to use and even the pricing to some extent? Absolutely. 100%. Game changer. Game changer. You know, my VA is pretty good about doing listers, listings because she was a, a seller before and she does VA. She's a VA for other sellers as well now. But um, she does that. She gets a much better idea, better idea of the um, prices. And then I don't, I'm not as apt to spend as much time reviewing the listings now as I used to. Okay. And so I think it's a win-win for everyone. And again, it's always been there, but we never used it because nobody wanted to spend the extra 45 seconds, but we'll do the extra three seconds. Cause that's just, we're just snobs that way. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it takes me to a separate tab. Like it just right. pops up on the side of my listing. So that's why I love, I love it. it. <laughs> and so here's the sum up Tiffany Turner, one click, no need to open the image, right click, choose search image with Google and then get to the comps. Just one click with List Perfectly. Thank you for there you the go. That's that's the summation right that's there, the Tiffany. Summation. If you remember one thing from this, you can screenshot that uh, that comment right there. Wait, I am going to screenshot it. Don't there take it go. off. Yet. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Maybe List Perfectly will have a barcode scanner one day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can dream. You can submit a feature request, Josh. Joshua. I would love a barcode scanner and list perfectly. Let's team up, Josh. And for every, at once a week, we'll both submit a uh, request. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And, you know, as always, ladies and gentlemen, please give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. If you haven't subscribed to the List Perfectly YouTube channel, please do so. We love likes. We love subscriptions. And we really love shares. So that would be lovely, too. Wait, I have to ask Laura a question. Laura right. says, I want a machine to cut my fabric so it's not uneven. Why? It's okay to have uneven fabric, Laura. I don't know. I don't know. And I, you know I just, I'm just curious as to that. You should do a listing party on fabric. Because you basically said your next year is going to be fabric. You're going to be a fabric expert. We'll do a listing party on fabric. We'll talk about uh, even fabric, uneven fabric, <laughs> listingparty.com, ladies and gentlemen. Or Laura, you could do a, a, a listing party on fabric as well. But um, And then, yeah, if you want, if you're interested in that barcode option to be scanned, you could add it as a feature request. And we look at all the feature requests. We weigh them, you know, based upon popularity, based upon feasibility, but every single one gets looked up, looked at uh, by the tech team all the way up the top. I'm sure Clara takes a look too. <laughs> Laura, you don't, it doesn't need to be even. It doesn't need to be straight to sell it. Uh, most people don't want you to cut that off. So just measure your pieces. Your fabric will have a fold in it. Measure it at the fold. Um, put that, that's how much you yardage you have. And um and list it like that. Right. Yeah. And I imagine most people looking for fabric just need a certain amount so that they can cut for themselves. I would assume, I don't know anything about fabric, but yeah, I wouldn't I worry. If you, absolutely. You're what you're 100% right. If you have fabric, don't worry. I don't spend time 
um, straightening it up. I wouldn't sell anything. All right. Well, that'll be the tease for Teresa's fabric <laughs> listing party. You know what? Oh. It's, not, it's not a bad idea, Doug, but it'll be a while because, um, uh, you know, I have to move and then get it all set up and everything. Oh. But it's interesting because I do have some tips about um, how to photograph fabric because, as you can imagine, the color is critical when you're photo photographing fabric. I would imagine. So. So speaking of photographing and Google Lens, so Josh, and then, so what's your perspective? You're big, you're big on AI. We've talked about AI. We've talked about chat GBT. What, uh, what's next for Google Lens? Obviously we're hoping for the barcode scanner integration with List Perfectly. What's next overall in your mind? Uh, well, I guess when I think Google Lens, as far as reselling and List Perfectly, um, it's really just about workflow. It's about saving time. It's about um, utilizing a tool, you know, having tools work for you. There's no need for me to reverse search an, in, uh, an image now whenever I can just boop, click. Okay, it has what I'm looking for. It doesn't, you know. So I think that's basically where e-commerce is going to go as a whole, right? right. No one's going to want uh, get up anymore to go to the thrift. I know you guys hate to hear it, but people are going to be going to the thrift stores in their home. I want to be on my phone. I go to Goodwill auctions and like do get stuff that way. And like, that's preferable to me than going. And I saw the bins. I saw what they're like. I saw how crazy it was. And I, I liked it like for many reasons, but it also just made me think like this, doing this, but from home, like that's, that's where we're going as far as AI and, you know, um, AI driven tools um, basically that are there to do the work for you. So you just need to have, the idea and the ability to kind of, um, you know, have things function in a way that works for you. You know, it's, these tools are only going to be as good as the seller, basically. Teresa, what do you think? What's next for? Um, well, you know, I think that Josh has a point. I think that um, the pandemic has made us all want to just stay home more than we used to. Yeah. <laughs> but uh I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, we can do everything and get things delivered and at home, but I still think that there's the thrill of the hunt. I don't have that thrill of the hunt, but it was fun to find some things at the bins. It was fun to find a 1990s sealed Lisa Frank stamp something or other that I haven't done anything more than put it in my office in the bag that I carried it out of the Goodwill bin store in. But, um, but yeah, I think that, I think that, there's room for both. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I think it's more like, there's always going to be a place for that. I think it's more that, you know, as e-commerce grows, it's not necessarily going to be seen as the norm when in the future I can go and play Roblox with my headset and then go to the mall and get the, and own the actual physical copies, but I'm buying the NFT certificate for that. That's, I mean, I know it, it kind of sounds crazy, but that's literally what it's going to be. Like, I'm pretty certain on that. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Yeah. So to, to sum up any device, oh, go ahead, Teresa. Sorry. I was just going to say, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, we're living George Jetson life already. So what's after that? Yeah. I rarely leave the house anymore. So you know, maybe I need help. I need the opposite. I need to need help leaving the house. <laughs> Okay, so Google Lens integrated in the list perfectly listing flow saves you time, helps you with your title, your keywords, your images, your search engine optimization, SEO, which helps you overall with your listing optimization, gives you different, uh, allows you to see all the different prices, all the different uh, listings across the board that are in Google Shopping. You can look at uh, other listings, look at your competitors. Um, Again, any browser, all your devices, no, it's uh, included with all the list perfectly plans, no additional fee. I love the tip from Clara, screen print that, uh, that screen that comes up with your comparables and save that in, great um, tip. yeah, that's a great tip. Save that in an extra image. And then uh, always remember that um, optimization is a process that, you know, 
takes time, but this certainly helps. Um, it's a great option. What else? Anything else? Yeah, what maybe is next for Google Lens possibly is t- even taking out the click, saying, hey, you know, uh, basically describing your word with mouth. We already have that in so many ways, but, you know, it's hard to kind of figure out the next step of what that listing optimization is going to be because we're already pretty much just one click. What's after one click? It's hands-free even, you know, so, Yeah. That's, that's that's all true. I wanted to add. Yeah, I'm still trying that's to wrap cool. my head around what could be <laughs> what could be next. Amazing. All right, so a couple other things, and then I do have today's winner. So, um, any final words, Josh and Teresa? No. No, I'm good. I love right. Poshmark. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> great for Poshmark. Um, thank you to you both for joining us today. This was a fun, lively chat. I'm going to remind you of a couple things, and then I will reveal today's winner. So first of all, camp listing parties coming up, List Perfectly's uh, first big reseller event. It's going to be amazing. We're going to start announcing speakers next week at a lightning pace. Teresa Cox will be there. Josh Gutierrez will be there. I'll be there. Everybody will be there. The List Perfectly team will be there. A lot of speakers, some speakers you probably haven't seen at events before. It's going to be amazing. Um, We're going to do some listing party stuff from there. It's going to be super cool. I'll be there doing podcast stuff. Uh, So for all the info on that, go to listperfectly.com slash events. Early bird tickets are going fast. They are on sale through the 15th. So be sure and check that out. But we're going to have a lot more content coming out around that with the speakers and with the announcements starting next week. Congratulations again to Donovan Collections for winning the most recent Community Spirit Award. Uh, Recognition out to Don. Thanks for all your help with listing party. Um, Trish mentions you regularly, but we appreciate it. I think he's one of the, one of the hardcore listing party uh, partiers at just about every listing party I've ever seen and uh, listingparty.com for all the, um, all the info on that. Monday the 10th, we will be live in Pittsburgh at seller meet, a seller meet up there. And then I will be hosting a, um, a live cast from Pittsburgh. I'll be here because I don't leave the house. <laughs> Other team members will be in Pittsburgh, but we'll do a live cast on the uh, List Perfectly YouTube channel which is where you're at right now. Uh, and it's at youtube.com slash listperfectlyyt. And then Thursday the 13th, we will be in Ohio and we will also have a live cast for that. So I will uh, hopefully see you there. And I'm very excited about this. My kids were teasing about teasing me about it last night because I showed them. We've launched Reseller News. Uh, I think Josh has something to do with that. Celine produces that. And so it's our weekly um, high level overview of reseller news. Look for that across the board um, on our socials. We should have another one coming up uh, coming up today or this week. And uh, I'm filming another one this afternoon. So thanks everyone. Let's reveal the winner today. Today's winner of a fabulous month of List Perfectly. Today's winner. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to our Friday uh, List Perfectly YouTube Live, How to Use Google Lens to Sell More, with the fantastic Teresa Cox, 25-plus year eBay seller, first user of List Perfectly, Joshua Gutierrez, card seller extraordinaire, popular brands, uh, sell it better, uh, 10,000th or 12,000th list perfectly user, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. That's a guess. And then, but thanks everybody. Take. Thanks for the great participation. Obviously, there's a need for Teresa Cox to do a fabric listing party. But today's winner for a free month of list perfectly is Treasure Box Land. And Treasure Box Land, what we'd like you to do is email tiffany at listperfectly.com. You've won a free month of List Perfectly. You can use it, your current plan. If you're not on the pro plan, we definitely recommend checking that out. So congratulations. Yeah. And so use the pro plan and definitely hit that magnifying glass. There you go. And see the power of 
Google Lens, no manual, no manual search. The power of the list perfectly Google Lens integration for your listing optimization, saving you time, saving you money, giving you back time, and giving you money. It's oh, awesome. Yeah, AI is all about giving us time, right? 100%. Right. And one, one last plug. Have a great weekend, everyone, from Flippin' Hippos. She's off to her listing party. So if you're into true crime and listing and doing them together, check it out at listingparty.com slash events starting right now. And thanks, everyone. And uh, happy, happy weekend. Happy Easter. And uh, we appreciate you all. And special thanks to uh, Teresa and Josh. And we will... Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will, Teresa's waiting. We will see you next time.